Yeah, look, we um, some of the young guys have been training with us for a couple of weeks, and they're in really good shape. And and certainly the more experienced players, the five plus year players, came back and you know acquitted themselves really well. Obviously, Van Belly normally wins the time trial, and we almost expect that. But how pleasing is it to see Dangerfield second behind him in that run? Yeah, well, look, Patrick is you know in our top three or four every year, so he's an elite runner. I guess um, the, the the really pleasing part for us was just the the evenness. So we had you know obviously you have those standout guys that are. Um, you know, they're right out the front, but then what we did see was, you know, everyone over 1500, which, you know, even the big ruckman um, and, and some of the guys that don't quite get there. So, um, as well as a lot of guys, you know, either, you know, getting close to their personal best already on their first day back. So that's a, a really good sign. Is that running side of thing going to be even more important now with the, the tweak to the interchange stuff? Yeah, look, I think that's the, the general consensus that uh, it might become a bit more of a, an aerobic game and, um, you know, and players will obviously have to spend a bit more time on the field if, if they're doing less rotation so um, you know we've certainly looked at that for uh, in, in depth and we've sort of made some adjustments to our training and um, I think most clubs will be doing the same thing. XVB, how far did he run? Did he get to 2k or just under? No nah, look I think he, you've given him a little bit of a head start I think he was 1600 and something so um, which is which is very good, yeah. I'm not sure anyone's ever got 2k. Tom, you're a little bit ahead of the game. Oh, <laughs> my <laughs> Steve Monaghetti got it I think. <laughs> Um, but no, uh, 1600 or somewhere above that was really good. Um, but yeah, I guess you know it shows that uh, you know from the skipper to the the bloke who's number 40 on the list, they all came back and and tried to push to do the best they could do. Just on VB, he's obviously come up in the media a bit. Some people critical saying it's time mm. for him to pass the baton over to Patrick. Where do you sort of sit on? Look, I think that's something that um, at some stage we'll talk about. But uh, look. Nathan, I think what we sometimes uh, fall into the trap of just seeing performance as one of the only key indicators of whether someone's uh, a great leader or not. And, and there's so many other things that go into being a leader, and um, and Nathan excels at, at most of those. So um, you know, so whilst you know he was disappointed with his form last year, and some some of the other guys, you know, you mentioned Patrick had had a great year. Um, there's so many other things that go into it and I think we saw with some of the younger players where the leadership's thrust upon them sometimes that's a, that can be a heavy burden to carry so um, it's not something you do lightly um, and at some stage you know, as a, as a playing group and more importantly as a coaching group we'll discuss that. Is Patrick a captain in the making though down the track do you think? Oh, look, I think we've got a number of outstanding candidates you know talk about Patrick I think Rory Sloan's uh, another one who displays leadership uh, Taylor Walker is another one who uh, is really good at, at uh, giving instruction on the field. So I think we're really well placed to be able to, uh, when the time comes, um, you know, add to our, our leadership department. So just with that process for next year, um, sort of up for grabs, if you like, can you go through a process? To no, look, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's up for grabs. It's not something I've discussed with Sando, but I think um, uh, the, the way that it's gone, it's generally announced um, early in the new year or, or late. Uh, this year, so it's it's not something that's on the radar at the moment for us. Just generally with pre-season, it felt from the outside last year that you kind of almost were easing into the season to peak late in the year, if that makes sense. Is there going to be a different mindset this year? Yeah, look, I think it's uh, it's a bit like training racehorses, isn't it? You know, like um, at the time we thought we were doing the right thing, um, and it's fairly well documented. Our start to the year wasn't great. Now, how much of that was uh, down to um, players? You know, being eased through pre-season. You know, we eased Patrick Dangerfield and a few others through pre-season, and they certainly performed really well all year. Uh, others um, had indifferent seasons, so I don't think you can pinpoint and say oh, it was just pre-season. If we do our pre-season differently, that'll guarantee us to be able to perform really strongly this year. But um, you know, one, one of the things that was interesting, though, we we certainly did finish the year really strongly. So it is a real balancing act. You do want to be playing your best footy. Um, come September but you've actually got to be doing enough to be able to be there in September so um, we've got a lot more control this year didn't play in finals you come back a bit earlier you have more control so the year before played almost to the, the second or last week of September makes it a bit, bit more difficult to get that process right. Outside of the running kind of stuff what, uh, how much game style things do you think you need to change and what kind of areas would you be looking yeah, at? Yeah look I think the game style um, over the competition evolves a little bit each year and a lot of it comes down to you know what the, the top teams are doing and I'm certain that uh, most of the clubs will be looking at Fremantle's defensive structures and looking at how they're going to go about that would be no different to that. A lot of teams will be looking about you know at how Hawthorne offensively moved the ball and how they were able to create opportunities against Fremantle in the final. So um, the game changes all the time. We, we probably recognise that we've got to tweak our game style a little bit as well. Um, 
Although I think that uh, with the addition of some of the players to our forward line, that'll give us much greater flexibility. Last year, we felt a little bit hamstrung with our options up forward. Um, we hope to have you know more people to be able to call upon this year. Big text looked impressive out there. You must be wrapped with the way he's going. Yeah, look, one of the things that uh, that is really impressive is the gusto that he's he's approached his pre-season with, and um, you know we we understand it's a really serious injury and. Um, you know the club won't be taking any chances with him, but you know he looks fantastic and he's you know right on track to where the doctors want him to be. So um, that's that's really great for us. I think the the other players as well get a lot out of it when they see him running and kicking. And Josh Jenkins is another one who's you know right on target as well. So um, yeah, it uh, it makes a difference when you you break that milestone when you get out of the gym and doing all those exercises and actually start to run around and kick the footy. So um, that's certainly pleasing from our point of view. Touched on it before, but how excited are you to have Eddie Betts up forward, a small forward who can kick 50 goals in the season? Mm. Probably isn't a luxury the pros have had. Yeah, I think he, 2012 Ian Callan kicked 40, so um, you know and that was a great year for Ian. But Eddie has, um, you know, lots of dimensions to him. He, he has genuine speed. He has some aerial. He has that forward pressure that uh, that is so important these days. So you know, he, he's a, a multifaceted player that. Um, like I said, we probably haven't had uh, yeah, up and firing consistently for us over the past couple of years. Um, I think James Pods Adley will be really important for us. Um, he provides a bit of leadership. We talked about um, our forward setup last year was very inexperienced, and a lot of young players in there. He'll give great direction and, and great support to some of those players like Taylor and Josh and those big guys. So um, another thing with with James, he competes really strongly. So if he doesn't mark it, he brings it to ground, and he uh, he gets after the opposition as well of how that side should go next year? Well, yeah, it's, it's a really tough one because, um, you know, we certainly want to improve on what we did last year. We uh, uh, we felt as if we gave a lot of opportunities to young players who, who did really well, but the challenge for those young guys now is to continue to improve. Um, we understand that we had some, some of our uh, more experienced players probably below their best for large parts of the year, so, you know, we'd expect them to, to come up again. So... If, if we get those results, then we feel as if we'll, we'll get some more wins on the board and um, be in a much stronger position to be able to be playing in September. But once again, having said that, um, you know, who would have predicted Port Adelaide's rise last year? You know, I think every year a team from outside the eight jumps into the top four almost. So um, we, we can't control what other teams are going to do. So we're just really singularly focused on making sure that, that we improve on last year and that, uh, that we do the best we can do.